and welcome to Ask a Paleontologist. I'm Dr. Scott Persons, and this question comes to us from Twitter, where Janica asks, how is it possible for the layman to distinguish actual fossilized bones from casts, from full skeleton displays in museums? Sometimes it takes the awe of seeing a dinosaur skeleton away from me when thinking, maybe it's a cast. Well, that's a great question, Janica. Uh, let me begin, though, by suggesting that you temper your disappointment a little bit whenever you discover you're looking at a fossil cast, because the goal behind most fossil casts is not to deceive or trick you into thinking you're looking at a real fossil, but rather to try and represent the true anatomy of that fossil as close as possible. Remember, fossil casts are made from molds taken of the genuine article. For example, this is a cast of the humerus, the upper arm bone, from a Tyrannosaurus rex, and it's a pretty good cast. If you look closely at it, you can see all these cracks and chips were actually present in the original fossil. What's more, if you look closely at the articulation ends, you can see all the fine bumps and notches in the fossil. That really is how it would look. Now, on this specimen, there are a few giveaways that you are looking at a cast, and they haven't quite gotten the bone texture exactly right. For example, you can see here and here a few places where air bubbles formed during the casting process. So, that's a pretty big giveaway. Now, museums often use fossil casts instead of the actual fossils for their big skeleton displays because the casts can be made of a lot lighter material than the real fossils. They're also far less delicate, so you can put them in riskier situations. Now, that is, of course, a cast that hasn't been painted yet. Here's an example of a painted one. You can see now it's starting to look a lot more like the genuine article. This is a foot of Albertosaurus. But there's still a few giveaways that what you're looking at here is just a cast. If you compare it to, say, an actual toe bone from Albertosaurus, or an actual Albertosaurus toe claw, you can see that while the paint job is pretty good, it hasn't picked up on a lot of the subtleties, a lot of the variability in the coloration that we see in the true fossil. Now, the coloration of a fossil is determined usually by the kind of environment, the chemistry of the environment that it formed in. Another giveaway that this is a cast and not the real deal is that the individual bones were cast all together rather than one at a time. So you can see there's actually no break between the various toe bones. Oftentimes in museum displays, you can have a combination of cast and real fossils in the same skeleton. That's not surprising because usually when we find a dinosaur skeleton, it's not complete, and casts of other specimens are often used to fill in those gaps. Usually, the museums will keep the casts and the real fossils a slightly different color, so you can look for that. But one of your best clues to whether or not the skeleton or the individual bone in the skeleton is a cast or not comes from how it's mounted. As I said, real fossil bones are a lot heavier than are the casts. For that reason, they often need a lot more support. So you can look at the metal scaffolding that's holding the skeleton up. If you see a lot of support given to each individual bone, odds are you're looking at the real fossil skeleton. If not, you're probably looking at a cast. But by far, the best way to know if you're looking at a cast or the genuine fossil is to read the museum's signage. A good museum should always tell you which you're looking at. All right, Janica, I hope that answers your question. Now, if you've got a question for me, uh, send me a comment below.